guys, how's it going? Today we're gonna to be putting together a spring container that's gonna be loaded with color, loaded with plants. It's gonna be so pretty, I think. In fact, you can probably see some of the supplies sitting right behind me on that table. I've been looking forward to this project for a few weeks now. One, because I love to put together any container. It's just a fun thing to do, I love it. Uh, and two, this is going to a school auction tomorrow. So Bethany, who works for us, her son Alex, it's for his school's auction, a fundraising auction that they're having tomorrow. So I'm excited to put it together. I hope you guys get some good ideas or inspiration from it, and then we can send it on its way to brighten up somebody else's home. Look at all of these beautiful plants, and we've got more things we can pull from if we decide to, but the first thing I did was I went down to the garden center and I bought a brand new pot for this project. I thought that this was so pretty, this color, the shape of it. I feel like it looks very spring. Hey boys, I'm trying to do a pleasant container project no fighting. Hey, no fighting in here. Today's about pleasant spring flowers. Nope. I also picked up some new plants because I thought these pansies, this is the pink shades variety. So beautiful up against that green. And then there's the darker pink here. Look at that. It's so pretty. There's some hyacinths here some really beautiful Negrita tulips. And then this side, I've got plants that I already had. I'm thinking this might be too warm of a pink to go with everything, but we'll see how it comes together. We've got an Alba Vinca, which might be a beautiful trailing accent. We've got a double Bellarina pink ice primrose, the Kramer's red Erica. This is called Pink Kisses Dianthus. There's a salmon cyclamen, and then this is one of the Dusty Miller from one of our pots up in the Persephone garden. It's looking so great. And I also love the way that looks in this container. And that's gonna be our project for today. I'm just planning on taking my time, enjoying the warmth in here, and we'll just talk through everything we put in this container. Okay, so the first thing I usually do is assess the size of the drain hole at the bottom of the container, especially if it's a new one. This one has a just a nice regular size drain hole. Sometimes you run across drain holes that are really big. And I know some people use uh, broken pieces of terracotta pot or um, lands a little chunk of landscape fabric. I've used cheesecloth, double wet paper towels, uh, coffee filters, something like that, just to help the soil stay in the pot. But this, this uh, drain hole looks good, so we're just gonna leave it alone. So now I'm gonna fill the whole thing up with a potting soil. This is it right here. So bottom to top here, all the way full. And if I have the perfect amount of soil, I will be shocked. I would rather have to take out handfuls of soil than have to tuck in more around the plant. So I usually like to fill it quite full. Like that might be perfect. I do not add any slow release fertilizer for spring containers because most of the stuff we're putting in this container or in spring containers outside are shorter lived. You know, we're only enjoying them for a couple months, two, three months, and then we're replacing them with things that can handle our heat and that will grow through the summer months. So it's kind of a waste to put the slow re release in. Plus the stuff that I usually use uh, is a heat activated and because it's not super hot outside, it wouldn't even activate. So just double check what uh, you know, you're using in your containers. And if you plan on swapping for summer stuff, it may not be worth it, but I do like to start with fresh soil. Now the fun part about spring containers is that you can pack them extremely full because in the spring months, we're usually dealing with things, you know, like pansies, which will, you know, bulk up and they'll get a little bit bigger. Uh, tulips kind of stay the same size. A lot of things just don't need a lot of space in the spring and it's not warm enough for things to be putting on a tremendous amount of growth. So we can put things pretty much side by side and really deck this thing out and make it look full and beautiful right from the gate. The other thing about spring containers that's awesome is that you can fudge light requirements. If you're planting in the summertime for full sun, you have to make sure that you've got all full sun loving plants in there. You can't get away with tucking a shade plant in there uh, with them if they're gonna be in full sun. But in the springtime, you can put sun things in there, shade things in there. It's just because the sun isn't as intense, the temperatures are cooler. So plants that you wouldn't normally put together like out in the garden, can cohabitate in a spring container together. So what I'm gonna do is start with my larger things first, which are the tulips. I think that's gonna kind of be our centerpiece plant. I thought about doing like a, a cypress of some kind, but I think having true spring interest here with the tulips would be really nice. Now you can see the root system here. I don't even think it's necessary to do a whole lot of messing with that. I am going to design this pot with a back in mind too. So somebody can just back it right up to a, 
a wall, which is a lot of the time, I think, how we display our pots. I could be wrong there. We're just gonna tuck that in. So I just make a well in the soil, pull the soil back so that I can put my root ball in. And then after I put each individual root ball, we're losing the sun. I think it's gonna come right back out from behind that cloud in a second. But uh, I make sure that each root ball has soil all the way around so that we don't have any air pockets. It's gonna be pretty. Okay, we've got two more bunches of tulips and I might end up separating these and moving them around a bit, but I don't really know until I get further into the arrangement. Okay, so again, making a little well in the soil. We're just going to tuck this down in. The fun part about these bulbs is that when they're spent, they're all done, you can plant them out in your landscape and enjoy them for years to come. Okay, before we tuck in any more bulbs, I think I'm gonna try this right here, tucked in. That would look nice, a little textural element. So here's a, oh, there's the sun. Ah. So there's a closer look at the well that I just made for this gallon size container. Let's see what the root ball looks like. Oh, needs a drink, but it looks good. I'm gonna knock a little bit of the soil off this root ball right into this planting tray. There, that's perfect. And I kind of look at the plant a little bit too before I tuck it into the pot. Things can always be adjusted, but I like to find this is the back of the plant right here. We've got the taller side and then it kind of graduates down. So I'm gonna face the taller side toward me. Oh. Well, I don't know what it looks like from in front, but it looks really pretty. The texture and the color looks beautiful from behind here. And come up and look. Oh yeah, coming together beautifully so far. That looks really pretty. And yeah, I'm thinking this is too warm. I don't know, is it just me? I mean, I think it would be beautiful in here, but it doesn't really go. Sorry, Cyclamen, wait for another day. Now we're gonna work with one of our hyacinths here, kind of the same thing as the tulips. This one has a lot of soil we can knock off the root ball. Yeah, that makes it way easier to plant. Okay, we're gonna try to tuck it in right here in the center. We haven't had to remove any soil yet, but we're getting close. Okay, I gotta see it from the front. Oh, so cute. Another, we have that one pop up here. I think it'd be better down here though. Oh, that's so beautiful, it smells. It smells amazing. Okay, now we're gonna go for it with a few more tulips right here. I'm gonna remove some soil now. Okay, so our back layer is sort of done at this point. We've got our tall tulips, the hyacinths, and the dusty miller. So now we're gonna work on the front plants right here. I'm gonna start with the primrose. I think on this side. I think that'll be a nice bulk right here. I usually find with primrose that they've got little yellow leaves around the base, so I'm just gonna groom any of those off that I see. And this one's hardy down to zero. There we go, pretty. It's looking so bright and beautiful. I think we're gonna go in with this dianthus over underneath, kinda tucked underneath this dusty miller now. That's perfect. Now I think we'll put our spilling element right out the front here. Now I think we have just enough space to tuck in a pansy or two right in the center. Okay, hang on. Decided to put another one of these in. I need more height right here. Oh, 
oh my goodness, you guys, look at it. Look at how much color. And there's so many different beautiful plants in here. But there's one more thing I think we should add. It needed to be trimmed anyway. Don't you think that adding a few little spring branches would be beautiful? I do. Okay guys, it's all done. I love how it turned out. I just love it. Oh, I think those pussy willow branches were kind of a needed touch. I think that they added extra oomph to the arrangement and I think they added a bit more balance in terms of the silver color because we know we have this bright silvery color of uh, leaves right here with the Dusty Miller and to have a little bit of silver accent on the other side I think just kind of helps draw that interest over and all the colors just go beautifully together. And honestly, I wondered about putting the hyacinths in there. I know that some people are sensitive to the fragrance, but I think with there just being the two flowers, like I'm standing right next to it and I kind of have to try hard to smell them out here. And I think that wherever this would be displayed, which would most likely be outside, it shouldn't be an issue. Plus I picked hyacinths that were in full spectacular bloom because I wanted them to look amazing for the auction. So I don't think that they'll be in bloom for a huge amount of time. Kind of the same story with the tulips. I think there'll be maybe a couple more weeks of color out of these and then those will kind of fade out. And then you could deadhead the tulips and the hyacinths, leave the foliage. But I felt like adding the pussy willow branches helped bring a little extra weight up top. Once those flowers kind of fade out, there'll still be something really beautiful and interesting up here. And there's plenty of color to keep this thing going through the rest of the spring. So in all, I used seven tulips, two hyacinths, one gallon sized Dusty Miller, one of our Dianthus, two of the Primrose, and two of the Pansies. Oh, and then the one Vinca out the front. It's a lot, but it's pretty. That's how I like spring containers to look, right there. And you guys, that is gonna do it for today. I just really wanted to share this project with you, show you how it comes together or came together. Um, I was hoping for the best. I never really know when I start off. I just usually over gather. I usually gather too many things so that I have choices to use. Uh, and I'm excited to hear how this does at the auction. Maybe Bethany will let us know and I can share in a recap with you guys. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I hope you're having a really good day and good weather. We'll see you in the next video. Bye. Those are real. All you need to do is take it home and put a little water in Is it really? Man, those are gorgeous. Uh, I'll give a, I would have guessed they were fake. They look so good. 150. If you pay enough, hey, if you pay enough, I'll, I'll keep the pot with it. Thank you. 100 and now quarter and now half. And now 50, 175. And now who said, yeah, 150, 75. We're out. Gotta be 75. Now two, now quarter, now half. 250, now 75. And now 300. It's 3, 3. Gotta be 3, now half. 350. 350. It's 350. It's 350. 400. And a 4, 4. Gotta be 4. Gotta be 4. You're both out sitting side by side there. How about 375? Now 400. Oh, I took 75 right ahead of you. Gotta be 4. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, no, you didn't make it. Who said yeah? At 4 and a quarter. 425. 425. One more time now. 50. 450. You're out, Clayton. You gotta be 4 and a half. At 450 up there is out too. 450. Four and a quarter, four and a half. Wait a minute here, 450 in here. Still supporting GFA. Four and a quarter, four and a half, 75. 475, now 500. Five hundred dollars at 500. Gonna be fine, gonna be fine, gonna be fine, gonna be fine. Gonna be fine, gonna be fine. Gonna be down at about 475, 500. Look how, well look how well designed this is. I just, I'm, I marvel at how exact and perfect. That is a good look. That's a good look at three. Well arranged. $500. I don't think there's a weed in there. There's not one weed in there. Hit 500 out of 475, I'm gonna get 500. What do you think, for 500? Nope, 500? Nope. Wanna do five? Sold, 475. 236, $475, 236. Great donation, thank you.